Circular Change is a new funding model being promoted by the Community Foundation NI to help support people working towards social change. With me today in the studio to talk about this project is Tim McGowan, the coordinator of Circular Change, and Tamola Balagico from the Sawa Women's Project. So first of all, Tim and Tamola, thank you very much for joining us today in the studio. Thank you. Tim, to begin with yourself, I mean, can, can you tell us what's a bit of the, of the background uh, of this scheme? I mean, what, what, what were the ideas going on behind the scenes that sort of led to you know, bringing it here you know, as, in, into the sort of greater Belfast area? Yeah, so our sense is Northern Ireland is a great place and it's a place that I love living, but it's also a place that's really divided. So we all know obviously it's divided by orange and green, but it's divided in loads of other ways as well. So it's divided by income, for example. So kids who grew up in lower income families do far worse in their education than kids who grew up in their higher income families. We know it's divided by race and ethnicity. So the research says that there's lots of issues about d division along those lines. And we know what's divided about our vision for the future. So I guess the Brexit vote is one of those, is a really good example. 40% that voted out, 50%, 56% voted remain. And I guess that lands for me in, in that uh, many of us live in worlds which are quite bubbled or siloed. So for me, I live in a world which is very white, very Protestant, very middle class, and there's very few opportunities for me to meet other people who are a bit different from me. And particularly even when I do meet those other people who are different from me, maybe in work or um, the supermarket, there isn't really an opportunity for me to get to know them and hear their story and explore. So I guess at the Community Foundation, we had heard about a project in America where they bring together people from all walks of life to do two things. One, to hear each other's stories and so to go on a journey which was about them learning about themselves and about learning about our wider community. And then secondly, then having got that experience to then work out, well, what together could we this really broad grip do to, to, make, to, bring a ch to bring about change. So that project in America, they've run 50 of those grips, they've raised five million pounds, it's had a really transformational effect. So that led us to the thought of, goodness, could we do something like that in Northern Ireland? So I set about in June last year trying to, trying to recruit a grip and we ended up with this really fascinating grip. So in our grip, uh, we had this wonderful young woman who had been homeless in her past. Uh, we had someone who had been, oh, a very difficult story. She'd been a victim of the troubles in a number of different ways and also came from an area of the city where there was lots of issues around uh, mental health and suicide. Uh, we had someone, we had two people who came from a refugee background. Um, uh, we had a whole pile of people who came from the kind of community sector and wanted to do something good in the world. And we also had a number of pe people who uh, came from the business, business world. In fact, one of the business guys grew up in a different community from mine in a small in Balamani, a small country town where I grew up, but he grew up in the Catholic community, I grew up in the Protestant community. We'd almost had identical lives, but ne we'd never, never passed. And so we started from this really fascinating group uh, and over, we met over dinner, we met once a month essentially for seven months and at the start we simply tried to get to know each other. And for me what happened in the group was, it was really profound Karen, because uh, we, bega we began to learn things, certainly I began to learn things that were really new for me. So uh, one of the most striking moments for me was we asked the group to share a story which was their defining story of living in Northern Ireland. And so one woman, a woman who's a refugee, shared the story that she said every, every week people throw dog crap at my house. What do I tell my children about that? And I, I found that, because I have, I have children, I find that, that really connected with me and particularly connected with me because that woman lives probably half a mile from my house. I live in a place that feels safe. No one's ever thrown dog crap at my house, but they've thrown it at her house because she was black and that felt, made me feel really shocked or sad. There was another woman in the group uh, who, to, who told stories about living in West Belfast and told stories about the endemic issues with mental health that there were in that community, which was so different from my background. Um, and, and there was another girl in the group who told the story about how, uh, how she ended up homeless relationship breakdown uh, with her mom, relationship breakdown with her boyfriend, domestic abuse, and suddenly she was on the streets. And so that was very profound that those early days in the group where we began to surface what some of the key issues are in Northern Irish society. 
And through the group, I mean, you know, part of the, part of the work involves you know the, the, the fundraising and the initiative to, to sort of you know to come together, raise money, and obviously then channel that money into different groups who are, who are, who are doing you know, various good works. Um, you know, the, in terms of the work itself, so on the first stage, the fundraising itself. I mean, when when you use it, you know, whether it's individuals or as a group, we're sort of going to people, potential donors. I mean, what were people asking about this project? Because as we you know, circle for change, as you mentioned, it's something that has been used in America. It's never happened here before. You know, it is something that's was of a different model. I mean, what was the reaction from user and people when you're asking them to sort of help support the initiative? People were genuinely really fascinated by it. But I think there's a real hunger. There's a real sense of people. Uh, feeling that they are stuck in the world that they are in and they saw this as an opportunity to connect in and to hear the stories of different people and when I told them the stories, my friends or my colleagues the stories that I've just told you, so many of them are really touched and I guess that then led very naturally to well would you like to support us with that, with, you know with some money for that. Now in my wildest dreams I wouldn't have imagined that we'd have raised as much as, much as we did but I think the fact that, that we that we connected in a very authentic way with each other, I think the fact that it was new, and also I think because there was a sense that uh, the people who, who are friends and family of the group felt that they, they really trusted what the stories that were in the group coming firsthand from people, that then people responded incredibly generously. And so that group of 17 people, uh, there were some people in the group maybe with slightly deeper pockets, but generally, people were ordinary people like you and like me. Uh, but they, we reached out, talked to our friends, and unbelievably raised 45,000 pounds. And Tamola, your organization, Salah Women's Group, it, it was one of the first beneficiaries uh, of the circle of change. For anyone who maybe isn't aware of your group, would you mind just tell us a little bit about you know, the, the organization and, and some of the work that you do on a, on a day-to-day basis? Okay, um, the Salah Women's Group is about women, the the refugees and the immigrants and um, a lot of women who has a lot of um, skills and talents but they cannot do anything because they can work and the Sour um, group has given them opportunity to be able to express and share their skills and um, the other most important thing is they want to do a lot of things but they can't do maybe going for interview for their governmental interviews child, the children will be with them. So that is one of the main things that we've provided um, a crash for them so that they can be able to, we, they can mind their kids while they go for the interview because a lot of um, words that the children will, would not be okay to hear. So we've provided that for them. And um, empowering women and um, a lot of um, skills being um, been, um, they've been able to identify their skills and they were able to say, this is what I'm good in, this is what I'm good in, and we are creating um, timetables for activities for them and we ask them what they, what they are interested in. They've been able to point out this is what we, we like, this is what we want to do, and our women have been able to, we're trying, we are putting in all our best to bring them up and we've actually started with some and um, the crash is, is starting on Thursday, decorating everything for them. So and um, it's a platform for them to empower each other and to have a, a time to share with other people their feelings as well and most especially is to, to give them a place of acceptance in an environment of, you know, we all that we all are visitors in Ireland, but it's a platform for us to be able to feel at home and embrace one another and share our experience and skills so that we can work together. And also we can, when we do this, we will we'll give back to the country. With the women you support, I mean, are, are they coming from different places, from different backgrounds? I mean, maybe some of those experiences they're going through, I mean, do you find it, you know that they've got similar maybe backgrounds you're coming from, or are the are the women from like different experiences and different backgrounds? Yeah, all from different backgrounds. We have the Sumerians. We have um, different, all from different um, backgrounds, and um, we have both re different religions as well. So they are all, no matter who they are, no matter what background they are, they are all welcome as long as they are women. <laughs> yeah.
And do you find, you know, especially amongst refugee and asylum seeking communities, I mean, do you think there are particular needs for women in those communities? I mean, are, are there issues they face that do need that, that special support or that particular support? Yes, because um, before we, we, ha we ask them what they want and that is what we are working on, on their needs and what they want. And then um, that is what will make them comfortable because this is telling us what they want and we are able to give it to them then they're able to spread the news to other people in the community that once, you, once you're here, you can do a lot, like computer training. They're all eager to, to learn that. They, 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 they want to learn how to do the driving um, language barriers for English, to, for them to be able to groom themselves more in language. Yes, is there. And above all, they have a place to keep their kids so that they can be able to achieve what they want to to know, not just being isolated in the house, don't have anywhere to go, don't have anything to do. And Tim, when, when the group was making the decisions about which groups was going to support, I mean, given that you, you, you did, as you mentioned, these came from you know very diverse backgrounds. I mean, did you find there was a lot of uh, you, you maybe unanimity when it came to what, who or what you were going to support, or was there much divergence? I mean, I, I, how do you think the group did come together when, when it came to supporting groups like Tamola's? Yeah, I, I think I think the strength of the group was it was divergent and it had lots of different voices, and that actually gave us strength because it, it gave, as it said, experience on the front line and some kind of business acumen in the room, and actually that fused together well. I think the process, we took some of the process from um, the project in America, um, and also we used the experience of the Community Foundation who are good at that. So we'd identified very clear uh, themes, you know, how do you start to do good in Belfast? Well, you've got to narrow that down a bit. So for us, mental health issues, minority groupings, leadership issues, homelessness were our areas. And then when people applied then with very clear criteria about what some of the things that we were looking for, which we scored, uh, that, took us, that took us to a long list. And then one of the really powerful moments for the group was that group members went and visited two projects each. So they actually got first-hand experience of what was going on and they came back and told the story. And that then gave us another opportunity to score and that brought us down to what the you know our six projects so actually that process was really good you so sometimes in that you need a need a little bit of a healthy you know a healthy raw or a healthy bit of negotiation and i think we got there really well and there was a real sense come the end that the six projects that we had chosen we were really proud of but, you know the the, the sawa project was brilliant because it was working with women who are particularly vulnerable uh, we have another project that we worked with or that we funded that also worked with refugees and asylum seekers but working with younger children who are maybe a little bit more integrated and one of the things that i love is one of the one of the things they're going to do is is to help some of those children from refugee backgrounds who are interested in computer coding to uh, unlock that possibility and that potential and that just feels interesting in terms of what they will bring uh, to our society and also what that can do for them. We fund the projects about mental health issues of counselling in West Belfast which really fitted with one of the feedback from one of the groups um, and we funded this brilliant project called Love Works on the um, uh, just off the Crumlin Road um, helping to give vulnerable men and men in particular at risk um, opportunities with new skills around baking and bike repair and, and so the actual output of what we did felt really good and can I say Kieran, I as well as the sense of us hopefully doing something good in our society, I pr probably most profoundly of all, it was a real learning opportunity for us. At the end of the group, the folk from the business background were able to say, goodness, I know I understand the community sector so much better and, and feel much more confident about how I can get involved. People from the community sector were saying, I've never selected projects before, and so now when I go back to my world, I will be much, I will write much better applications and I'll be thinking about the business people in the group that are auditing it. Um, and that felt like for all of us, we go back into our worlds upskilled and powered. Um, and that feels really significant thing. And Tomola, what, 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 what will these funds mean for you in your work? I mean, what impact do you see that having on, on the sort of work that you're doing? It's a great impact because at the end of the day, we are going to give back to the community. For example, I am giving back to 
to the to Northern Ireland because working as a voluntary for the Sour Project, it's it's a great thing for me and it's something that I really really enjoy. And I'm so keen to either I want every woman to be successful because that is a target of every everybody wants to see everybody growing and seeing the best for everyone. And um, Sour. Um, project is one that can bring out the best out of women because if you're in the house there is nothing you can but the more knowledge you are gaining from other people around you it will be much greater for you to pass on to other people and you've been in receipt of, of, of the funding you know, that, that that's coming out of circle of change I mean, I mean, is this something, I mean, that you could have fundraised yourselves? I mean, was this something, I mean, in your work, I mean, I imagine there's a small group. I mean, is this something you could have done yourselves without, you know, the support of the likes of Circle of Change? We wouldn't have been able to raise the fund by ourselves. How would you, or would you, I suppose, recommend this, you know, the, the, this model for other groups as, as a way to, you know, so support the work or reinforce the work that they're doing? Oh, definitely. I will, we will surely recommend any other person to it because it's it's a it's an amazing thing and um, it's really really helping a lot of people. And Tim, the project as it exists right now, I mean, it is essentially a pilot. You know, it's operating in the the Greater Belfast or, or the Belfast metropolitan area. I mean, is it something you, you foresee it could expand in the future or, or it might develop? You know, after as was this this past year and the work that you have been doing? Yeah, the Community Foundation, I think, are really keen to. Uh, to grow it next year and are very open to uh, people applying so please contact the Community Foundation to talk about that. So uh, once again Tim and Tamola I want to thank you both very much for joining us today in the studio and good luck to both of you and all of your work. Thank Thanks you. Karen. appreciate thank that. You. Thank you.